Oh wow, that that seems difficult. Could I could I maybe offer you some green tea? Would would green tea help? Perhaps some banana bread? Plus, people are quitting and TJ ain't happy. Brad and Jody partner up. Three kings have to protect their palace. A whole bunch of trampolines and a whole bunch of nasty falls. Tundra makes a cameo. Tragedy has struck the challenge family again. And tech money decides it's time to show up, show out, or shut the fuck up. It's the All-Stars 2 Episode 5 recap coming up right now. Welcome to The Challenge Historian, where we dive deep into all things MTV's The Challenge, past, present, or future if it's happening in the Challenge universe. We are here to document it. I am your host and dedicated Challenge Historian, Jacob Hollibaugh. Thank you so very much for being here with us today on this joyous Thursday on the podcast today, we are chatting about all things All Stars 2, Episode 5. It's Thursday. That means we've got a brand new episode of All Stars 2 to unpack. We've hit the halfway point of the season. It was another action-packed episode with lots to discuss and discuss it we shall. Before we dive in, programming notes next week on the podcast, we will be doing all three podcasts, same as we've done this week in the last few weeks, which... Wasn't always the plan, because after last night, if you're listening to the Spies, Lies, and Allies recaps, you know we thought, or if you're listening to the Tuesday Review Preview, where we only reviewed and previewed Spies, Lies, and Allies this week, because we thought it was the last episode of that season, we were wrong. It is a two-part episode, which means next week, instead of turning our full attention just to All-Stars only, we will still do our regular Tuesday review preview of both shows, maybe a little more heavily on the All-Stars side since we skipped it this week, and then both recaps on Wednesday night, Spies, Lies, and Allies Thursday afternoon, your All-Stars recap. So next week will be the same as any other the last few weeks have been, which was not expected, but more challenge is always is always a good thing in my book. So that's what's going on with the pod. Outside of that, no house cleaning notes to speak of. So we will get right into this episode of All Stars 2. Another another great one. Honestly, the show really can't seem to do any wrong at this point. They they're just batting a thousand uh so far. Still still going strong here. We will start uh the episode with our Cliff Notes recap, everything that happened in the episode plot-wise, then dive into some of those storylines, talk about them in depth, follow that up with our awards, our power rankings, and finally an update to our season-long predictions. Same old script as the last few weeks of coverage of this show. So without further ado, let's go. Kicking things off with that Cliff Notes recap, these these episodes I almost Kind of, while I'm usually someone who's a big fan and proponent of every episode of this challenge should follow your kind of typical, you know, some house time, a daily challenge, some house time, an elimination. I, I like the kind of standardized format of it, but I've got to admit, uh, with with these shows being, with them, I've gotten so used, I guess, to the 90-minute uh, episodes of the flagship program for, I don't, I don't know how many seasons now deep they are into doing the 90 minute version, um, at least five or six or more even. Um, it just, it doesn't, the 40 minute episode or the 42 minute episode, whatever they're, uh, pumping out here with the all-stars, um, especially without, I can't believe I'm saying this without the commercial breaks to make it feel longer, um, which I'm happy for MTV, your commercial breaks are, sometimes can reach ludicrous levels on the flagship program, but it just feels like there's not enough time to pack in. I want so much time with all of these wonderful people, and it kind of has me longing for episode one and two when it was really drawn out and only one, either a daily or an elimination, and you know, only one of those, not both of them. Uh, so a lot, lot happened. We got to cover it all. So as quickly as we can, everything that went down plot wise on this episode, all stars to episode five, the halfway point. We are there. Here we go. Three, two, one. And we're off. Party time, post-elimination. Everyone's dancing. Everyone's having a great time under the Cancun moonlight. Tundra makes an appearance. Ayana is a little worried about being that constantly thrown in person. And Melinda gets some early shine, which is relevant later on. The three kings then meet, a.k.a. Nehemiah, Tech, and Letarian, who plan their moves and their alliance. And wonder aloud, is Steve, their roommate, part of their crew or not? The next day, we learn that Tina is trying really hard to not be the person she was a decade ago on these shows. But that anger 
can be hard to control in this environment. That's followed by learning of personal tragedy. In Melinda's life, as a few months prior to filming, she lost her baby at five months, and the due date for that baby would have been the next day in the episode, the next day at the Daily Challenge, so it's going to be a very emotional day for her. They then do get to that next day, and they head to that Daily Challenge. It's called Bounce Back. There are a set of trampolines going up into the sky 20 feet above the lake. You have to bounce up all the trampolines, jump off the last one, knock off a puzzle piece, land in the water. Once you have done so successfully three times, you take those puzzle pieces to finish the math problems, and your time stops. Fastest man, fastest woman, win power, slowest woman, slowest man, go straight to the arena. It proves much harder than it originally looks. A lot of folks struggle to get the pieces knocked off. A bunch of them take really, really hard falls into the water. The worst among those is Melinda, who has to get medical attention and is DQ'd after a real nasty fall onto her head. In the end, Melinda and Steve, who made a big mental error, are worst in going to the arena, Jody in a landslide on the female side, and Darrell by a second or two over Brad on the male side are your power couple. Back at the house, Brad meets up with Jody and Darrell to solidify their alliance and give his opinions and also to ask Jody if she will be his partner for the rest of the game now that Derek is gone. She says yes, they are a duo to be reckoned with. Smart people right here. Darrell and Jody then make their nominations. They pick Tech, Tyler, Ayana, and Tina, knowing that this will force Ayana to play her life shield and they can replace her with Casey, but that she won't be able to save Tech, who they are gunning for to break up the Three Kings alliance. Ayana, not happy about this, considers it a shot at her. Back in the bedroom, Steve tells Melinda he'd rather go against Tech than Tyler, which infuriates the Three Kings, who thought Steve was cool with them. Not so much. At selections, Tech is chosen, as is Tina in a shocker over Casey, who had literally quit during the challenge that day, much to TJ's chagrin. Tina then bangs some pots together, announces she's pissed, she's coming for everyone. First up on her list will be Jody. Jasmine laments that she's too old for this shit, and in an attempt to calm Tina down, Melinda offers her some green tea, Tyler some banana bread, which is just downright hilarious. At the arena, they play switchback. Three lights on either side of the arena. You've got to run back and forth, turning your lights on, your opponent's lights off. First to get their opponent's lights all off with at least one of yours on wins. Tech and Steve get heated early. They deliver some big hits to each other in a game that suddenly becomes physical. Steve eventually makes one big air where he misses one of his buttons. It ends up costing him tech money, gets the W. On the female side, we don't even get a match. As the moment the horn is blown, Tina just steps into the middle of the ring and waits for Melinda to finish. She concedes to TJ that she doesn't like the person she is becoming, that this is not the environment for her, and she'd rather just head on home. And so Tina and Steve are gone. Tech and Melinda are back in the game, and the season is officially halfway over. Whew, oh man, that is... I probably could have maybe trimmed that down a little bit, but they they really pack in these episodes completely. I mean, it's moment to moment. They're going from one conversation to another. Boom, boom, boom. Every one of them is relevant. So that's everything that happened. Now let's transition into talking about some of those moments and some of those storylines a little more in depth. Let's talk those storylines. And there is only one place to start. We've got a few things to discuss here, but the only one, that has to be where we start, is Tina. Tina was, you know, as big of a get to bring back into this world as anyone when this when the cast was announced and the second season was announced here, even back when the first season was announced and people were, you know, speculating, fans were saying, who would they want? Tina's name came up. I would, I would, I mean, I don't have any, you know, exact poll to point to or, you know, I don't exactly, I haven't asked every Challenge fan out there, but I would, it'd be hard to imagine anyone being any higher than Tina, she would have been in that tier A of complete and utter fan favorite, fits every version of whether you want to say all-star, OG, legend, whatever verbiage, adjectives you want to use, she fits the bill. She was, you know, everyone wanted her back. And we got her for the second season, and she has been A-plus television the whole time. It's been so much fun having her. So there's no no other place we can start than having a true legend of the game eventually quit and leave the show. Let's let's run through the whole the whole episode with her. It was a slight, a little bit of a roller coaster as it sometimes can be. Um, we find out early on. We get some allusions towards you know 
Uh, she's trying to play a different game, not just play a different game, but be a different person in this house that she maybe looks back on how things were before and doesn't have any regrets or anything, but wants, wants to be different, wants to manage that anger a little bit better. She says uh, in a confessional that anger used to fuel her and that this time around she wants to you know play more diplomatically, play more fair, and not get so upset, get so personal like she did in the past. Um, which is all well and good. It sounds great. And we're like, all right, great. That's, that's lovely. Uh, still, you know, I hope you have some more disposable swim trunks and you want to keep doing pranks and you want to keep saying a bunch of hilarious fun shit. If you want to play the actual game itself a little more politically, all good there. Um, she then does, goes to the challenge, does fine in the challenge. Uh, she's a part of the, they kind of run through uh, six or seven of the pairings just real, real quick. We don't really know other than we see them finish. We don't know who did that well, but she seemed to, you know, she completed it, did fine. She's been doing very well the whole season on all the challenges so far. She's definitely been holding her own. Um, and so, you know, that part of it is a bummer. Wasn't like, so when she's like, ah, you know, I, I have not even able to compete at all. Like she was full on competing and doing really well so far. Ayana then she gets she gets nominated she gets put up as one of the four which I'm still having horrible problem with when calling it nominations or selections or whatever the heck they're calling it selections when the whole house votes on the four people I don't know that they're calling it anything when the two people put up the four names so I'm going to call that nominations and then selections so at nominations she is put up as one of the four names and immediately afterwards Ayana asks her straight up to her like you're not even mad. Like what, what's going on? And she says, you know, I don't play the game personally. Jody does, which (laughs) I know we're that, that that's what she's trying to do now. Uh, And again, fully respect and love that about her. But, uh, (laughs) the, I don't know, maybe it's the mental trick for her to be like, you know, I'm not going to do this super personal, super angry this time around. So I'm going to, I'm going to say that someone else is to kind of, you know, transfer that to someone else, project that onto someone else. But, um, you know, Jody is calling her out for more or less personal reasons, but also a little bit competitive reasons. And just, you know, we're kind of now we've said each other's names in this game. So like, I'm going to say your name again. So I don't know. I'm a hundred percent with her on the, I don't play this personal Jody does. Maybe we just go with the, I'm not playing this personal anymore. I'm going to be calm. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to put in work and I'm going to do my thing. Uh, but it's an interesting moment of like, all right, she's calm. She's collected. She's, uh, she's living this new life that she had said, uh, which is great. And it was kind of a turning point in the episode where it's like, oh my gosh, okay, we're not, it, it, you know, there was a moment where like she gets nominated and you're like, oh, they were just setting us up for her to kind of flip out a little bit here. And in fact, she's not, she's going to be this calm, rational, not play personal person. So, all right, we got that. We got that. And then they go to the votes and the selection process and she gets voted in over Casey, which fully with her in this moment in the rest house. I'm like, I'm sorry, Casey, you, you know, this game can take you from such high highs to such low lows so quickly. And we saw it with Casey. She overcomes her height fear. She wins trivia. She's in the power seat. She uses it wonderfully. She executes a big move and does so in entertaining fashion. She is, you know, on top and then comes into this episode, jumps off once and is like, I'm I'm not doing this. I'll just go straight to the arena and then gets bailed out by Melinda getting hurt quicker than Casey could quit the competition. And so Melinda goes in, but everyone in the house, I don't see how, you know, both whether you love Casey or want to see Tina go in or whatever, but strategically, even when someone quits the challenge and openly says in doing so, I'm good, I'll go to the arena it's an easy vote to make, even if you're best friends with them to be like, Oh, you know, you, you, you admitted you were going there and you, and Melinda got hurt and that's, you know, not totally fair. Like, I feel like you should be in there. You were open to going in there. So here's my vote for you. Doesn't go that way. Goes towards Tina and then Tina explodes a little bit. Um, she gets voted in. It's the last straw. She goes in, she bangs the pots (laughs) together to make her big formal announcement. A moment we knew, we didn't know when it was coming, but we saw this moment in the trailer. They played it repeatedly, so we knew sometime, somewhere, Tina was going to bang some pots and pans together, and we get that moment now, and she announces 
coming for everyone. You guys have brought the bitch out of me. You brought the anger out of me. Like, here we go. Jody, you're up first, but then every single one of you, you're getting it. <laughs> um, loved Jasmine's little comment in the background during, at the end of this moment of, oh, I'm just too old for this shit. Like, <laughs> uh, it is wonderful watching these people play this game years, years later and just the comparison of who they are now versus then. Um, and Jasmine has been such a delight to have these moments of like, you know, I could see Jasmine of, you know, rivals era Jasmine bang some pots together or make some big proclamation. But nowadays she's like, oh man, I'm just too old for this shit. I can't do this shit. Love that little moment. Um, so Tina's blown up. She's losing it. We get what I believe we will hand out moment of the episode a little bit later on, but certainly a nominee um, for moment of this episode. One of the funniest moments of the season uh, <laughs> when she's in a room, she's all upset. Melinda and Tyler are trying to console her like, all right, well then like how, how do we talk you down? Like how do, how do you, how do you get yourself out of this state? And Melinda throws out the, can I make you some green tea? Which is just Tina immediately the face she makes like Melinda, come on. What? Sure. Go ahead and make me some green tea. That's going to get the job done. Tyler throws in the banana bread comment. The whole moment between them is I, I laughed really, 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 really hard when that happened. Um, and we will, it will come up again later on the podcast. The tea doesn't help. The banana bread doesn't help. Whether she got either of those things, I don't know. They don't help because we get to the elimination and we're thinking we're going to get a huge match. We're going to get to see Tina and Melinda in action. And then he blows the horn and she just walks to the middle and it is clear she is now going to quit. Now, I certainly applaud the, the mental maturity here to know that she's come to the conclusion and says very forth right now, right? Hey, you know, I don't want to be that necessarily have these these characteristics or these problems that I was portrayed had or was portrayed to have had way back when I was doing this show regularly and I came into this house hoping to change that and you know it's bringing it this environment's bringing the worst out of me it's making it very hard to continue with these kind of changes um, that I've been working on and so I want to get out of this environment. I don't want to revert back to something I've worked so hard to change or alter or, you know, make better in any single way. You got to applaud that. You know, you know, we got to look out for each other's mental health. And it's very, you know, aware, self-aware of her and very good of her to say, you know, this is doing something to me I don't like. And it's worth way more than a shot at 500 grand to me who said early on it doesn't need the money at all, which was one of the more hilarious moments to open the season. But, you know, it's way more important to her to not, you know, go backwards on any of this mental work she has been doing. So for that reason, you know, you got to applaud it. That's, that's, that's all fine and good. Um, the only thing that's makes it a little tough and, uh, small spoiler, uh, here, I guess I should give the spoiler alert, maybe go ahead 30 seconds if you don't like casting, um, spoilers, but, uh, for those that are comfortable with it, um, while I stay away from spoilers of who wins and things like that, I do know that the cast of All-Stars 3 is out there. They've already filmed All-Stars 3, or they're currently filming it, or I think just wrapped up filming All-Stars 3, and Tina's on All-Stars 3. She's She goes back and does it again. So that makes it, knowing that, makes it a little worse, I guess just ring a tiny bit hollow for me of, you know, that this environment was driving her to a place where she... Uh, didn't want to be in it anymore, didn't like what it was doing to her, but then is going to return so quickly again and do another season immediately. Um, that That's interesting. I would love to ask her about that. I would love, I bet at some point someone will, or you know, she will talk about it somewhere of that decision-making process. Um, and you know, maybe it's, you know, it wasn't going well. She gets home. She's like, I can do this, you know, continue working on it. I want to go back and prove to myself that I can, you know, that I can handle this, that I can be a different type of person in the house. That's all well and good. But uh, knowing that does kind of, it it alters the way uh, this was received for me of watching her go out in this way. Mostly, I also just as a fan wanted to see her compete. So it's a bummer to see her go. And as a big, big fan of the show, clearly, 
the show loses a lot with Tina not on it. She brings a lot to the table on this show and the show, the sport, all across the board, A plus entertainment and is one of those people that we talk about constantly, the ones that are there that know we're here to make a good TV show, and she is one of those that's always definitely known, like we're here to make good television, and that will influence some of my decisions and what I do. So the show loses a lot with her gone, but she is gone. We'll then move on to the next storyline. We get a lot of Melinda this episode. Um, we get, you know, we learn of the heartbreaking loss of her losing her child five months into the pregnancy, and you know the devastating emotional uh, loss that that is, the tra- traumatic experience that that is, and uh, you know it's another. This, this is not the first you know heartbreaking, um, super emotional, heavy moment of this season. We had Derek with the loss of his sister, you know, a few episodes ago, and it definitely sets up you. It makes you realize one of the other you know, things about doing these all-star seasons with a cast that is much older, you know, average age, a lot higher, a lot more people, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, even with families and careers and kids and just a lot more life experience is that the, the way life works, the, if the cast has, you know, lived a lot more life, they're further in their life where shit has happened, good and bad. Um, and that there's a lot more, you know, life experience being brought into the game and a lot more, you know, unfortunately, really sad and tragic stuff like this, that, you know, when it's a bunch of 25 year olds versus a bunch of 45 year olds, you're bringing a lot more life experience into it, you're bringing a lot more backstory into it. um, And you're a little less learning about yourself and a little more, you know, reaffirming certain things about yourself. And so she's playing through this heartbreak, has the very emotional, you know, the date, the due date of uh, what would have been the due date of her daughter is the day of the challenge and is definitely, you know, leaving her in a very emotional place and takes the horrible fall is brutal. Um, we'll talk about those falls in a moment when we talk about the day of the challenge, but she just wants to get her chance to prove herself, prove something to herself and to the rest. And she doesn't ultimately get that opportunity. She ends up in the elimination and, you know, she's ready to do it. She's ready to kind of have this big release, this moment, whether win or lose, but compete. And then she doesn't get to compete because Tina quits. And it, 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 this is not the first time that this has happened by any means. Um, but it is one because of the emotional element, the heartbreak, the tragic element to her recent backstory. It is one of those moments where I've always thought, you know, when you go into an elimination and the other person quits and you don't actually have to compete, on the one hand, yes, you're still in the game. And that's ultimately the the singular goal above all else, just to be in the game. So you gotta feel, you know, good that, hey, I went in, I got put into an elimination and I I came out of it, even if I didn't have to compete. But there's that bittersweet part of it's gotta be so odd to win an to, to win an elimination where the other person doesn't compete, to to go in, to get yourself all pumped up, to have all that emotion come into it, to get all that suspense, all that adrenaline of like, this is my moment, I gotta prove to myself, to other people, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna kick some ass, and then, well, I don't go home, but I didn't actually get to give out any of that energy. All that stuff got built up inside me, I don't get to put it out there, and I just always feel for those people that it, you know, they're not going home. That's all that really matters, but it's gotta be such an odd feeling, an odd you know, what's the rest of the night? What's the next 24 hours like for you, just your body emotionally and literally like physically, like if you're, if I, I obviously haven't done it, but I would imagine like any other big, you know, a sporting event or just big moment in general, when you're going into elimination, you're thinking about it all day. That's affecting your body chemistry. You're getting so much adrenaline and everything, you know, different feelings and things rush into your head right before you're getting all amped, amped up. And then to not be able to actually release all of that and do the thing and compete has to make for a weird, a weird next few hours and night and day and whatnot. So, uh, bummed that, you know, happy that Melinda gets to stick around, um, bummed a little bit that she doesn't get to actually compete and get to have that kind of that real moment of release, but maybe, Maybe she will get the odd opportunity, you know, in daily challenges or eliminations to come. Next storyline then is the alliances that they were brewing before, but now they're super duper out in the open. And it's really just one alliance that may not be realizing that they're not nearly as big as the other 
alliances or would-be alliances in the house. And that is our three kings. We got Nehemiah, we got Tech, we got Letarian. The boys, the kings, the three kings, their bedroom, but more so just the three of them are super close. They're rooming together and they're trying to run this game together. Love the name, love all of the analogies of like, we got to protect the palace. We're taking care of our bedroom. Our bedroom's the palace. If you're in it, you're on our side. We got to protect it. Love, love, love all of that. Um, the Letarian's intensity, I will forever appreciate in uh, desire. And again, as I said a lot during the All Stars One podcasts, um, I would do anything to have Letarian be like my life coach to just be there every morning to pump me up or tell me that I could do it. I mean, he's very David Goggins esque and just like, I mean business all the time, but yet I'm also an amazing, awesome cool ass dude. And you're totally chill with how intense I am back to you. I just love everything about it. But the three Kings, they're putting themselves out there. It's said by the end of the episode, you know, Brad comments on, see the Brad or Darrell, the end comments on, they're not making any bones about it, that they are one big, big Alliance, but it's not that big. It's just the three of them plus maybe Melinda. But then we got on the other side, we got Brad and Darrell and Jody who make it known this episode, they're playing, they're kind of the trio of them are playing together. Brad, the best strategy moment of the whole season, one we predicted early on was, you know, Derek's gone now. So he immediately goes to Jody and says, you're the best female in the house. And I know you were working exclusively with Derek, but he's not here. So anytime there's a partner elimination or a partner uh, challenge coming up, I think we should be partners. Can we lock that in? Me and you, and they, they lock it in. Great choices by both of them. I do as they've been at the top of my power rankings and spoiler alert, they will be again this episode. Um, so good team up there. But then from a an alliance perspective, you've got so Brad, Darrell, and Jody kind of working together as a trio. And then it it's not known yet, but it's kind of clear that, you know, you got Tyler and Janelle, the are our two Key West, who we know Janelle is secretly tight with Darrell. And it seems like everyone else so far has been using Tyler as the everyone likes him and won't vote for him. So if you put his name up, the other guy's going in. But it seems like Tyler and Janelle would side with Brad and Darrell over the three kings. It seems like Kahuta and MJ, we know for a fact they're, even after getting Darrell putting their names up for elimination, are still totally cool with him. So they're on that side, not with the three kings. Jasmine and John A., seem probably on Brad and Darrell's side over the others. They're the two that maybe I could see, you know, they're clearly working together as a two. They've lost Ryan and uh, and Derek C from their alliance. Maybe they could go either way if they had to kind of partner up, join one of these two other alliances. But I think they would probably be on the Brad, Darrell, Jody side. And then obviously Jody and Kendall are, you know, they're working together. They're with Brad and Darrell. So it kind of seems like if, if the three kings are going to make this like it's our alliance versus everyone else, well, everyone else is going to side all together in one big group. You're going to end up with Jody, Kendall, Jasmine, John A, Kahuta, MJ, Tyler, Janelle, Brad, Darrell. That's what? One, two, three, four, five. That's 10 people against three. Um, so not sure if they're they're being super smart about how they're going about this alliance. Love the moment we get from Darrell clearly is just super duper comfortable. He's like, look, I came into all stars one thinking this would be easy work. I got second place. Yes. Beat me. But like, I'm coming back and this is still easy work to me. Y'all haven't done this recently. I have, I just feel confident in every aspect of this game. And we get that when, you know, Ayana comes in very upset at them for making her use the life shield. Um, and I do think there was a little bit of it while it wasn't said by Ayana, but was said after the fact by Darrell and Jody. Uh, I think Jody said, do you think she was mad that we didn't make Brad do the same thing just to like make it happen? And Darrell literally is just like, I don't care. He just like laughs, like, I don't care who's mad. It doesn't matter. And it's just so clear that he's like, none of this matters. I have way too many friends in this game. I am way better at this game. The challenges, the eliminations, the finals, the social, the political, I'm way better than all of you. And none of it matters. Let anyone be mad at me that wants to be mad at me. It's not going to matter. And I don't think it's going to matter. And I'm glad to see Darrell just super comfortable living his best life. And that's kind of where the alliances are drawn right now. I'm thinking 
and we will talk in predictions. What the, the the new prediction for that we will be adding at the end of this episode has something to do with the three kings. So stay tuned for that. Finally, final two little storylines to talk about is just the sporting events of the episode. The daily challenge. I'm going to give it a B, just a solid B. I'm actually going to give the arena game and the daily challenge both. A B, I liked some things about it. I didn't think they were, you know, great, elevated, anywhere near A, tato- A category, A tier. I don't know which word I was trying to go with there. But anyway, in the A range, I don't think they were anywhere close. But they were still really solid, really good, um, had enjoyable aspects to them. Give them both a B. The Daily Challenge, I think, would just be super-duper fun. Like, could you leave for production purposes, this is one of those times where I'd be like, can we get that set up, you know, like a day in advance? Can I spend an hour just jumping on those trampolines and jumping off into the water? That seems really, really fun. Um, the, the falls, that's what we got to talk about. The falls. I know I fall into this trap when watching. I'm certain a lot of people do. Maybe a lot of people don't. Maybe I'm just an asshole, but a self-aware asshole. Cause I realize it in the moment, um, that, these falls are way more severe than I personally give credit to immediately and then have to like think about and then like, ah, oh, shit, I actually, yeah, that would be horrible. That would be so, so bad. I'm sure, you know, every cast member will say this about these ones that like hitting that water is a lot more painful than the people at watching home realize 20 feet doesn't sound all that high. And no, it's not that high. If you just run and jump into the water and do a little pencil dive feet first, you're good, you're composed. But if you're lunging out at something and you're falling and you end up, now I'm doing a belly flop, now I'm landing on my back, now I'm landing on my side or my head, that hurts. 20 feet's a long way. That's a lot of speed to gain, and that's got to hurt. And uh, multiple people, I mean, Melinda obviously took a horrible fall, has to be medically DQ'd to check out her head to make sure, you know, no concussions or something going on here. Casey takes a real bad one, comes up breathing real heavy, real hurt. Jasmine does the same and then, you know, proves her strength, comes back and is like, I just need a second, but then I'm going to do this. I'm going to finish it. Um, some of the guys take some bad falls. It's very, it's very quickly. Like they, they needed to plan those jumps a little bit smarter in that, you know, the short people were definitely at a, a more of a disadvantage on this one of having to jump and lunge where you're in a bad position to fall. But those falls are severe. 20 feet is higher than you think. Uh, did enjoy the sunset challenge. I don't remember too many sunset challenges. Uh, the last three or four rounds of people going is literally with the sun setting in the background. I don't know that the light would have helped or hurt anyone. So thankfully that wasn't, you know, a disadvantage to anyone going near the end. Um, but thought the visual of that was really awesome. Casey quits. We, we talked about it before, so we don't have to talk about it again. TJ's quote when she quit will come up here in a minute when we talk awards. But again, how quickly this game can build you up and tear you right back down. And this was big evidence of that. As for the arena game, again, B, uh, the rules to me, maybe as usual, very unclear. Um, not sure how they aren't tied forever, because if you're, if, I, if, I think you had, we're told you have to, Go for one of theirs, go for one of yours, go for one of theirs, one of yours, or were you allowed to just run wherever you wanted to run? Um, Because it would seem like if you just have to go back and forth, then shouldn't for as long as they stay tied running, wouldn't it just be, I turn yours off, I turn mine back on, I turn yours off, I turn mine back on, and you just each go three, two, three, two, over and over and over, and you're each turning one of theirs off, then turning your own back on, turning off like just over and over and over. And it seemed like they went, maybe we just didn't see it. Um, but, you know, they there were some big hits delivered. And so, uh, you know, I know that slows you down a little bit. But how either of them ever got, how they co- so quickly got down to, like, we only each have one on and we're just kind of seeing who can turn it off fastest. Um, I don't know. It was a little unclear. Uh, liked, liked the big hits. think Steve made the biggest mistake Steve made wasn't missing the – missing the, you know, the button on one move, but was in fact, once tech knocks him down and it's clear, like, oh, this is allowed to be physical. Steve does the right thing and comes back. is like, I am going to check you out of this arena then, but his mistake, do it again over and over and over. You're bigger than tech. Tech is faster than you. And endurance wise, it's a total toss up here. So I feel like his only strategy, the moment tech hits him one single time, Steve's strategy just should have been every single time you come across this arena, even if it's, I have to go out of my way to do it. 
I'm coming and I'm pushing you to the ground and I'm making you, you know, really work for this. I'm going to make this as physical as possible. Uh, he doesn't do that. He eventually, uh, makes the one big mistake. Tech gets the win and that's your arena game. And, uh, that's, that's it for the storylines. So those are your big storylines, Tina, Melinda, the three Kings, the sporting events. Now let's talk about a few more moments from this episode via handing out some hardware. Let's give out our four big awards for episode five. Hardware time. We've got four awards for this all-star season that we hand out every single episode. That would be the best fit, the best moment, the best quote, and the episode MVP. Let's talk clothing first. And yet again, I find myself not yet regretting adding this award because I do enjoy it. I just wish I would be a little, I would remember it, it almost every time happens by uh, there's like, they get to the arena and I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I haven't been paying attention to anyone's outfit at all. And that's what I'm supposed to be doing to be able to hand out this award. So I'm going to do a little better in the future to make sure everyone deserving of a nomination gets one. I apologize if I'm missing any of these last couple of episodes, but this one, two nominees, uh, come up and yes, one of them is tech, as usual. The reason this this whole award even exists, yet again, uh, proving to be just mostly just to say that tech looks good every single episode. Um, but the two nominees, tech, his selection fit. We've seen the confessional, the the couple different suits we've gotten confessional so far. I believe we've awarded both of them best fit at some time prior. Um, but this time he's rocking a nice all kinds of colors and patterns and whatever it looks straight out of, uh, it, it makes sense now why he, you know, earlier in this season is the only one who would be like, Derek, no, you look fly. Don't let Steve talk shit about your outfit because he wears a very colorful out there, uh, button up two nominations. He's making sure the collar's right. He's making sure he looks good when he has to put his name on that board. And he does. So he gets the nomination. And then second nominee is, it was a quick, small sighting, small little cameo, but there was a Tundra. Uh, Tundra came out to, for a second visit of the season um, here. Tyler's, you know, I forget exactly how he framed it, but, you know, his cousin from, I don't even remember how that hilarious introduction we originally got, but the second time Tundra has come to the party and we get a brief moment. We didn't get nearly enough of that party in general. We got like a long kind of like 45 seconds worth of everyone just dancing and yet again, proving how much, uh, that just showing people dancing is just good entertainment. The whole basis for TikTok as an app and the popularity behind it is just anyone dancing, no matter how good or bad they are, what they're dancing to, what, how impressive of dance they are doing. People dancing is always just something about it. We, we like watching it. And I enjoyed watching the 45 seconds or so of just people dancing at the party would have loved more of it. Loved getting though, that quick little tundra sighting there. They give her a little walk out at the end. So, uh, got to award, got to award tundra in the nominee for best fit. But yet again, I now believe the three or four time award winner for the best fit will be tech. Let's then talk best moment. I have three nominees for the best moment. The first one would be Brad making Jody his partner. And this is more, uh, it was a good moment and an interesting moment, but it was more since I don't do a strategy award. Got to say um, that this was strategically, that this is why this one's getting thrown in best moment is just very, very smart of Brad to realize, hey, Derek kind of clearly right away had the partnership with the dominant female in the house and he just left. So I should really slide in there before she makes too good a buddy buddy with anyone else and know that there's probably going to be a lot of pairs working together the rest of the season. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to offer my services to her and hope she accepts, except she does. That little moment between the three of them is nominee number one, nominee number two, Tina's announcement, banging the pans together, the Brad in the background, like, oh God, Tina and Jasmine with the, I'm too old for this shit. And everyone just kind of staring in disbelief and Jody being like, I ah, just, no one follow her. She just wants someone to follow her. No one do it. Uh, that was weird. That was odd. Um, everything about that. And then immediately afterwards that on its own, we're going to split it up that on its own as one nominee. And then immediately afterwards, the moment of the episode, maybe the moment of the season so far, we talked about it before, but Melinda offering Tina some green tea to calm her down, uh, was just 
so, so funny. Uh, I hope, I, I doubt I am alone in thinking that is absolutely hilarious, but maybe the, the degree, I think that was unbelievably funny. Maybe I'm out on my own, but that was the moment of the episode for me. Then best quote for nominees here, uh, three people nominated for quotes nominated first up TJ, the man himself yet again, coming in, in the moment with the, this, I mean, what, what would you expect? Someone quits. TJ is going to have something good to say about it as he does here. When T when Casey decides she wants to quit, TJ lets her know where she will be headed very soon. So let's hear that burn from TJ. Casey, not even going to try. I'm going to try my hand at an arena. You hear that airplane? That's the one that you're on next. <laughs> It's just so quick and witty in the moment. So I, I, I don't even know if an actual airplane flew overhead at that moment, but I'm, I'm actually, it's Cancun. I bet there's airplanes going in and out constantly there. So good stuff from TJ. Then we've got Tech, the first of two Tech quotes to be nominated when we go into the Daily Challenge and he knows it's an individual, it's all on him. And he gives one of the quotes that may live on for a long time in this, just how, how the challenge goes, one of the kind of mantras of the challenge. So let's hear that from him. We're doing an individual challenge, and I have nobody to blame if I don't win except myself. So let's go, Tech. It's time to show up and show out. Well, shut the fuck up. Okay. Those really are, those are your options in a challenge, in an elimination, in this game. Those are your options. Show up, show out, or shut the fuck up. So love that one from Tech. Then we got Tina with, while the, the visual kind of goes a little bit with it, but I think you'll both remember and can can basically see the visual as you hear it. But when she gets not voted in, she the anger starts to come up. She's starting to get pissed. And she decides, she says, you know, I'm about to fucking... And then she has to she has to calm herself down. She has to try to refrain, but then she still she can't quite get all the way there. So let's hear Tina's reaction to being sent into elimination. I am getting more and more pissed the more people tell me, oh, you know, it's not personal. Of course it's fucking personal. My load is for Tech and Tina. Oh shit. This is supposed to be fun. I am about to fucking lose explode on everybody so and then finally our fourth nominee for best quote coming from tech his second nominee in the category after winning the elimination steve being from hawaii tech wants to he's an efficient man with his words so he wants to say hello and goodbye all rolled up into one so let's let's hear tech in his aloha to steve sending him home Steve, I like to say aloha, which means hello and goodbye. Hello, nice meeting you. Take your ass back to Hawaii on Broken Spirit Airlines, courtesy of your boy Tech Money. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate my first win. Thank you, brother. Four very worthy nominees with two of the four nominees. I got to give it to Tech. I'm going to go with show up, show out, or shut the fuck up because I just think that that's going to be used for a long time to come in challenge, uh, in in challenge i don't know what i'm working challenge verbiage i don't believe that'll be the last time we hear something to that effect so tech gets the win there two awards for tech which brings us to the episode mvp and guess what also tech melinda gets some votes for sure you know gets the win by default in the end comes back from the really bad fall we have the very emotional moments with her she also has the hilarious offering tina the t great episode for melinda uh, you know, Tina certainly at the center thing. She gets a vote or two. Latarian sneaks in a vote or two for just everything he does in this and a limited role in this episode. Everything he does is fantastic. But Tech is the MVP of the episode. He has the quotes. He's got the fits. He's a part of some of the moments. He's a part of the alliance that's emerging. He wins the in the arena. The whole thing. He's got to be the MVP of this episode. So that is our awards. Now, finally then, We've got those handed out. Let's quickly update our power rankings and our season-long predictions before we get on out of here. With our power rankings, we will be sticking with a top five on the male side and on the female side. Continue to update them. A little bit of movement this week, not, not a ton. No one that got sent home was previously in the power rankings, so no one to full-on replace and no one making big enough moves or big enough falls to you know drop all the way out or move all the way in. On the female side, we're going to stick with Jody 
clearly clear away the top spot. She was the top spot last week. She's been the top spot basically the whole time. And she's probably going to remain there until someone actually eliminates her. Janelle moves up to number two in my power rankings. She was number three. She's jumping Kendall. Kendall falls from two to three. So Jody, Janelle, Kendall. And the reason for that, I just, uh, one, Janelle looked real, real comfortable doing the daily challenge and just looked ready to go, locked in. And uh, yet again, for the second or third episode in a row, we didn't get almost anything from her, but she was visible. She was in, she was kind of there in the background of some of the conversations. And I just really like, um, I really like where she stands in the game. And I really like the glimpses of the athletic side that we're getting. So she moves up from three to two. Kendall slots in at number three, still looking really good in this game. John A four, Ayana five, those two the same as last week. Uh, don't think anyone, you know, it's going to be very tough to eliminate Ayana, even if she gets thrown in a bunch and her previous wins have got her into and keep her in the top five of the power rankings. John A, I think, is sitting in a really, really good spot to get to this final without seeing a an elimination. So Jody, Janelle, Kendall, John A, Ayana, your top five on the female side. On the men's side, Brad remains number one. And then Nehemiah was number two. I'm dropping him down all the way to number five, and I'm bumping Kahuta, Darrell, and Tyler up a spot. So we got Brad, Kahuta, Darrell, Tyler, Nehemiah. Mostly because where I'm about to get to with the predictions is that I see the Three Kings Alliance uh, set be, getting set up for failure here to come, and it leaves me a little a little uneasy on on that alliance getting to the final. And uh, I'm going to keep Nehemiah in the fifth spot because I think of the three people in there, I think he's got the best chances of you know maybe not having the the head of the snake being targeted, but maybe Letarian and Tech being the ones targeted first and getting knocked out before the final. But Brad Kahuta, Darrell, Tyler, Nehemiah, and really Brad, Brad and Jody both, I feel like are separating themselves episode by episode. And I'm feeling really, really good about my preseason prediction of Brad and Jody winning this whole thing. That is certainly still in play and feels better and better by the episode. As for the 10 finalists we predicted, we've still, we did not lose any more. So these are looking good. We're still nine left. The only one we've missed so far is Ryan. Um, so those are looking good. As for our predictions, every week we add one per episode to a season long predictions. We will probably do so for the first, I don't know, seven or eight episodes. So, so far, our first one, we are on or in the water 50% of the daily challenges or more. We are now three out of four. That one's looking good. Life Shield used at least 50% of the time. We are now five out of six on Life Shields being used. That one's looking good. Darrell will not see an elimination. So far, so good on that one. He is starting to make some enemies, though. Then last week, we added that the Key West duo of Janelle and Tyler would be the swing votes, would become the swing votes between two big alliances. That hasn't happened yet, but very well still feels like it could. And then our new one, we are going to add, we alluded to it before, the new one is the Three Kings Alliance is about to get worked by Brad, Darrell, Jody, and whoever else joins them and whatever they want to name their alliance, if they ever give their alliance a name. But basically, the Three Kings Alliance is going to get worked by the rest of the house. They're too public about it. They're too small of a group. And I think uh, they, they're going to, they're going to get wiped out pretty, pretty quickly here. So I don't know what parameters I'm going to exactly put around this. Um, uh, let's go with, so that we can actually say definitively whether this was true or not. Um, at least two or more elimination appearances from those three people. That's what we'll put it at. So three Kings Alliance sees two plus eliminations the rest of the way between them. That is our newest and latest season long prediction. So far we're looking like, I mean, we're looking at least three for four. Currently we're looking like all of these could come right. So doing a great job there. That is all for this episode for our predictions, power rankings, awards, storylines, recap, the whole thing. Episode five, we're at the halfway point. We've got, I believe, five left, but at this point, I'm going to have to double check my work now that I got was so wrong on how many episodes of Spies, Lies, and Allies there was going to be, but guessing there's only 10 episodes. That's what the season one was. I believe that's what was announced as season two. So we're halfway there. 
five episodes to go. Looking forward to all of them. Thank you so much, as always, for being here and listening to these recaps. The support means the world. Hit that follow, subscribe button if you have not already so that you don't miss an episode. We will be back next week with three more podcasts, same as this week, review preview on Tuesday, Spies, Lies, and Allies recap Wednesday, All-Stars recap on Thursday. Follow us at Challenge Historian on Instagram. If you'd prefer to watch these instead of listen to them, we are on YouTube as well at Challenge Historian. You will find all these podcasts posted there as videos. If you'd like to see me sit and talk to myself visually instead of just audio. So that is there. Follow us anywhere you look. Challenge Historian. You will find us if we exist there. Thank you for being here. I will talk to you again next week. Have a great weekend. Until then, peace.